Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Just Two Marks Wrestling Recap Show. I'm the Athletic Geek, joined by special guest this time, El Charloco of the many vlogs in <laughs> both Chicago and in New York City, and from the uh, Geeking Out podcast where we recapped all in. Or just went off on a bunch of tangents, which we're going to try and avoid to do this time. But anyway... Knock uh, on wood. <laughs> knock on wood. Anyway, this is uh, a special edition because I'm running the New Japan Cup uh, bracketology bracket sort of uh, contest. You know, similar to the March Madness bracket. And much like in March Madness, you have a lot of people that maybe don't necessarily follow this particular promotion or the sport uh super duper closely so they may not know the ins and outs of new japan may not know what to look for in the tournament and may not really understand how the writing process uh, works in new japan so maybe we could help you out a little bit if you're wanting to enter but don't want to just put a bunch of names that you don't know on a bracket other than a couple you know a couple that have uh, made their way to the United States. So hopefully, Charloco and I will be able to help you out with that. So are you ready to go through this bracket? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, the first the first match, or at least the, the top match on the bracket, is Togi Makabe versus Yoda Suji. And I know we spoke off camera about this. Uh, Suji is a young lion, correct? Yes. Okay. So, you know, I'm sure that I've, I've, I've made this comparison. This is kind of like, you know, the the equivalent of, uh, you know, Pacific Florida A&M versus the Kansas Jayhawks or the, you know, Illinois Fighting Illini where, you know, maybe Makabe will not be entering the finals or winning it all, but you know they're going to probably get past this particular game. Uh, I see Makabe uh, defeating the Young Lion, but maybe perhaps a good showing by the Young Lion to kind of get him ready for excursion when the travel bans are lifted. Oh yeah, I can definitely. I wouldn't be surprised if one of these Young Lions does make it through to the next round really? in this opening bracket. Well, that is very bold, and we will definitely get through to <laughs> talk about that a little. Although bit I'm sure if we go through this match by match, I may like. <laughs> I may uh, correct myself, but well, <laughs> they are, um, New Japan is good at, like, first-round surprises, it seems like, in their tournaments. They were. Uh, like our boy last year, uh, with the big upset win over Juice Robson, our boy Chase Owens, Chase Club for Life, too sweet. Uh, but still, that was a good upset, and it was actually really, really well-written and well-booked. Uh, but the next match uh, has a little bit more intrigue to me, and that is Tomohiro Ishii, wrestling junior heavyweight El Desperado and because of the travel ban we have quite a few juniors being entered into the into the New Japan Cup and uh quite a few less gaijin I only see here on the bracket two gaijin and I believe both of them as we talked off camera are living in Japan so you have nobody they're flying in from England and there's no American wrestlers in it whatsoever but still, Ishii and El Desperado, I, you know, I don't really get to see the juniors mix it up with the Stone Pitbull very much. I'm pretty intrigued by this match. Same here, but much like uh, the previous uh, match in the tournament, I don't see much of an upset coming at this one. I, I don't either. Um, I, I, I see it. I want to say a crushing defeat, but I kind of see it maybe being like Try to think of something. I, I kind of see maybe this match possibly playing out like the there's there's a match that I always liked as a kid. It was when Takamichi Noku got a shot at Triple H for the title on an episode of Raw back in 2000, where it was only a four minute match, but there were a few times in the quick succession of high flying moves Taka was doing to Triple H, where you kind of were on the edge of your seat thinking he was going to steal a quick near fall and win. I kind of maybe see that match playing out maybe a little longer than four minutes, but playing out somewhat similarly where, you know, it's maybe not super long, but there's going to be some times where you kind of 
gasp a little bit thinking that Desperado is going to get a quick one over on on Ishii. Uh, how do you how do you see this match playing out? I'd say about the same, probably a good showing from both, but overall I see Ishii taking it. Because also that means if we go by our past two wins, that means we get Makabe and Ishii in the next round, two guys who like, you know, kill it every time they face each other. Right. And with this tournament being in, you know, with empty dojos and everything, I'm sure New Japan kind of wants to take some safe routes of just people they know they can trust that can have a good match in any situation. Absolutely. To go throughout this tournament. That's something else that, you know, I, I, well, I always, you know, felt that New Japan could really still put on a really good product with no crowd. I am curious to see how the, how it comes across without a crowd. Oh, yeah, or if they'll play the, uh, or kind of go the similar route and put some, like, young lines in the stands or some office staff in the stands right. just to have something to react to. Because, I mean, in recent weeks, here's our tangent, but we've seen... True, well, but I feel like it's kind of hard not to address this. Well, here's our tangent. The, the tangent was we've seen both WWE and AEW do something similar, yet while AEW, it, you know, doesn't feel like a hot crowd, it feels like it's okay WWE, it just feels more forced, especially after watching TakeOver, so that's just my opinion. But you kind of wonder, like, where on that scale is New Japan going to fall? And, oh, yeah. Um, or if they're going to, like, learn as it goes on and make some sh- and kind of change it throughout. Right. It'd be kind of... I wouldn't mind seeing the Young Lions there, but I, if the Young Lions there, I would like it to be just kind of completely quiet, like, you sit, you watch, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. No office staff, but just like a, a sea of, of dojo trainees and possibly like, you know, Liger, I don't know if he still lives there or not, but, you know, just kind of looking and watching be like, you yeah. sit, you shut up. <laughs> no, you have an audience of just Young Lions and then just uh, Suzuki comes out like a shark in the water. Oh, dear. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. But right now we come to Toru Yano versus Jado. Who are you picking in this one? Like I said, I looked it over. I if it was a different uh, light heavyweight or junior, junior heavyweight in this match, I'd probably go with them because this means they would pay. They would be in a chance to potentially face the light have a junior heavyweight champion in the next round to set something up. But right. since Jado is such on, you know, on pretty much the low totem pole, I couldn't see him getting a title shot, like a junior heavyweight title shot to begin with. I think they're, I'm thinking uh, Yano, also because I'm sure they can think of just some weird shit for him to do with this environment. Uh, that's what I was going to go with. I thought, you know, I did kind of debate on making this maybe one of my upset picks, but I thought that, no, you know, you got... When you have no crowd, you can maybe use Yano's shtick a little bit more, and yeah. it probably, you know, it may, may be a good call to to go Yano. So we both, we both go on Yano. Yeah, I think and... if it was Ishimori or like uh, Desperado in that pick or in that spot against Yano, I could have seen an upset. But right. but yeah, not a lower uh, junior heavyweight. No, not the guy who just essentially is. Um... You know, Jay the B boy skeleton with a kendo stick. I was gonna say Jay White's friend who agrees with him. So <laughs> that works. <laughs> so yeah, but the next match, uh, and this will be potentially closing out the uh, June sixteenth event. I don't know what order they're going in, but we have. Tomaki Oma versus the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, Hiromu Takahashi. Who have you got and why? <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious. Honestly, I, could be, I could be wrong, but I think both of these men were... Uh, yeah, both of these men are replacements in this tournament. Yes. Uh, yeah, as opposed to the last few order, it's kind of like the clearly obvious which one is filling in. Right. Um... I feel like it's an obvious choice. Uh, I feel like Hiromu... You can't just have... I know he's a junior, but you can't just have Hiromu lose this early. And I, I feel like they're... I feel like Hiromu's going to have a, a... May not go to the semis or the finals, but I feel like he's going to have a deep run. I'm going Hiromu in this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
after we go through this round, I honestly have sort of a whole big picture specific thing of how this is going to play out. So yeah, I can't see Hiromu losing to this one, especially to Hanma, who I like, but has been you know largely kind of just in the uh, you know tag match yes. scene or pretty much filling in in tag matches since coming back from injury. Yeah, I I I, I see you know I just kind of Hanma's just kind of there. He's always been just kind of the lovable. He's been kind of a lovable loser with that that sometimes thrives in the tag division. I don't see him beating the junior heavyweight champion. In... Yeah. No. So, Hiromu Takahashi, all the way around. But we've yet to disagree, and I don't think this next match is going to allow for any more disagreement. Then we have Kazuchika Okada versus Gato. I will say I am just I'm... looking forward to this match just oh, for yes. kind of like the novelty and the story of it. Oh, yeah, me too. I think it'll be a tremendous match, especially when you have, you know, the storyline and Okada. Just, you know, the, the you can put him in there at the broomstick and Meltzer at least give it three and a half stars. But uh, I don't think there's going to be any doubt. There might be some uh, Bullet Club shenanigans that kind of lead you to that, oh, shit, oh, no, but... Yeah. Overall, I think uh, I think the Rainmaker triumphs over his former best friend. Same. I would call for an upset, but basically, with just Okada. with the rest the rest of the matches that like follow it, I don't see like connecting to it. Like would connect it would connect to like someone beating Ghetto and then moving on to that. So yeah, I'd have to go with Okada. I'm going with the same. But I do not see Okada making the next round, but we but we can talk about that in a second. Well, that's <laughs> that is exactly what I was going with. We have and this is probably to me one of the more it could go either way matchups, two of the most badass men in their fifties in the world. Yuji Nagata versus Minoru Suzuki. Who are you picking in this one? Ooh, that's a good one. And slight tangent, I would say the the first uh Modern New Japan show I watched, uh, Wrestle Kingdom Seven. This was one of the matches on the card and had the uh, and has the famous uh, Kaze Mizare entrance, like the live performance entrance from that show. Seven. And this was one of the big. Was that one? Say uh, what? I'm trying to think of what year Seven was. I know what you're talking uh, about. That was the uh, the first Dome main event of uh, Okada and Tanahashi. This Got was it. 2013. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and this was one. No, uh, this was one of the big like matches that like got my attention since, or that like I took away from since I'd never seen Suzuki before, and I did not recognize Nagata from WCW. I, so, I, I was uh, aware of Nagata through Global Impact, but oh no, you're right, you're right. That's but still, I'd say beyond yeah, that, beyond 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 Global Impact in being accompanied to the ring by Sonny Ono on Revenge, I I really didn't really know a whole heck of a lot about Eugene Nagata. Yeah, I totally forgot he was on that until playing it, like, last year. And just being like, oh, really? holy shit. It, and then learning you could actually, like, alter his outfit to give it, like, the Blue Justice style. Oh, nice. I didn't even really think about you. I know what I'm doing when we get done recording this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this one I really, like, I kind of had to flip a coin on, but I... I'm going to go Nagata in this one. Oh, really? I, I feel like they're going to kind of... Maybe he pulls a fast one, gets beaten down, and then that plays into his, you know, into his next round match. I feel like... I feel like you got too much with ok Okada and Suzuki to not do it with people. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's too sexy of a G1 climax tournament match, or too sexy of a, you know, something that when they can bring the fans back, they'll want to use. So this is my first oh, gotcha. pick. I'm going to go Nagata. So Nagata, so you can set up Nagata and Okada for next round. I would love. I mean, I would love that personally. I'd be happy to see either one win this match. For me, I'm going to go Suzuki, okay. just because I don't see Okada going too far in this tournament. So I think out of the ones that would more than likely beat Okada, it would be Suzuki, and then you can have like the rematch down like a month or two later at a show where Okada can get that win back, just kind of going by how New Japan normally books these things. Right. 
Although, like I said, I, unless the very slim chance, but I'm not going to call it, where let's say Gato sneaks into the next round, I could see Nagata winning that one, and then you kind of have the story of 50-year-old Nagata kind of like getting to like the semifinals or like, or like itching really close to that. But I just don't have a high percentage of seeing that happening. So right, right now my pick is Suzuki. Okay, that's not a... You know, this is one like it, it could it could go either way, but I I kind of yeah. feel, I feel like um I feel like we gotta have a an upset somewhere, and I feel like this would it, it an upset somewhere in the first couple days, and this would be kind of the grand place to have one. And Suzuki will never you know if he gets how how many times has he lost in the G one climax because he wanted to do the gotch and failed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could do this. You could do do that same kind of story, and then, you know, Suzuki be Suzuki, and he'll immediately be back right, right back into title contention for any belt you want yeah. him to go after. Of course, and also just him and uh, Ball, so him and Okada, they just are always really good together. So, oh yeah, any they, time they... to put any time to put them up is always you know not a bad idea. Oh no, I just. That ma- that match needs people. Yeah, that that is true. Um, but that could be the rematch uh, down the road, or sure. that could even be, let's say, the uh, the July twelfth show in Osaka Hall, that, like their rematch. Possibly, yeah, yeah. You could do a yeah. lot of different stuff. Let's move on <laughs> to this next match. We have Yuya Yumura. I don't think I said that right. Uh, versus Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Uh, I don't know anything about uh, Yomura, so I'm I'm gonna go Kanemaru. You could say that's an ignorant prediction, but we also need some. We need more juniors to kind of start making a splash, and Kanemaru's a uh, hmm. Kanemaru's one of the the top uh, villains in New Japan's junior division. So I, I'm gonna go Kanemaru. I'm just going to throw this one out. I'm just going to go with Yuya, or however the hell that's pronounced, just so they can just say, holy crap, we have a young young lion that won, and since okay. it's against a light heavyweight, you don't have to, like, you're not risking anything like that. Right. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's, um... Yeah. So, well, we got our first two uh, disagreements, so now we're going to have uh, make things really interesting when we discuss the rest of the bracket. Next matchup is Gabriel Kidd versus Taiji Ishimori. I think I'm going to go Ishimori in this one. Hmm. I, I just feel like they've done too much to to build Ishimori up uh, last year to have him fall in the first round with this opportunity. I gotcha. And uh, so I'm kind of looking over the bracket here. Actually, now that I think about it, you might... I'm, I'm still keeping with Kenamaru as a pick, but you kind of... Yuya being... You, Yuya winning would make more sense if we have uh, Ishimori winning, but they also do bad guy versus bad guy matches in tournaments quite a bit, so maybe it isn't quite as necessitated compared to like a tournament in the WWE where you need to have either... Two good guys are too bad, or a bad guy and a good guy. But I'm, I'm still going Ishimori in this one. I gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to go with Ishimori as well, because there are some possibilities. You could even ju- look into how the brackets go. This could lead to a uh, Takahashi match that could set something up in the future. Although, realistically, I'm looking at the, the bottom corner here on the on the left, and just whoever wins these next two matches are pretty much... Their opponents are more than likely either Okada... Uh, Nagata or Suzuki, so I can't see anyone at this bottom here going too far. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right there. But okay, well that is. We now go to the other side of the bracket, and we have the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Lord Emperor Taichi. Are you thinking upset, or are you thinking the ace? I'm thinking trying... this is the big upset. You think so? I think so, just because I can't see them doing uh, 
Tanahashi and potentially Abushi in the second round of this. Yeah. And well, I can't see I can't see them doing like uh, Suzuki Goon versus Suzuki Goon. So, and while it has this detractor, uh, Tachi does have a lot of momentum. He does have a lot of his fans, and they and I don't know. Maybe Tanahashi doesn't want to like. You know, with his injuries and stuff, maybe they don't want to push him too far on empty shows. <laughs> I didn't think about that until now, but um, I'm still... You, you you shed new light to where I don't think it'd be kind of an out-of-left-field upset, but I'm still going to go... I'm going to go with Tanahashi, but you'll understand why when I get to the next pick. Yeah, and part of it is also maybe just I want to see Tai Chi win. True, I mean, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I like I like Tai Chi. You know, to, to me, I, Tai Chi is it was new. It was New Japan that made me realize how important character was in addition to good wrestling skill. You know, when with the language barrier, it's like, oh well, I connect with this guy, but who's really good. I don't really connect with this guy, but he's still really good. So Tai Chi's still, I can, I connect with his character despite his uh, shortcomings in the ring, should we say. But you're, are yeah, you going exactly. Tai Chi? Yes. Okay. Well, you'll see why I went Tanahashi because this is my big upset pick here. And the next one is Kota Ibushi versus Zack Sabre Jr. I am going with ZSJ in this one. Uh, I feel like Coda. Coda's going to have. I, I kind of see Coda playing out a little bit more similar to like how Naito was a couple years ago, where he. You know, he, he came off a big loss in the dome. So his year is going to have some mild success, but overall, he's he's going to kind of have a little bit more of a lackluster year. He'll start building himself back up next year in the Dome. But I'm going ZSJ in an upset here. I gotcha. And I could buy that just because I feel like with these tournaments, uh, if there's a big winner that... A, a big potential winner that is not planned to get to the finals, they'll kind of get them out early on, so like people can already kind of forget about that loss and not have to focus on like losing to a major money player, you know, in a, in a semifinal somewhere down the road, sort of like they had with uh, Kenny and Ishii back in 2017. Right, right. I, I... Uh, for me, no. Oh, go ahead. No, you're fine. I, I, I'm disagreeing with you. It's just yeah, that, that's just how they do. Th- you know, uh, they did that with yeah. Naito in the U.S. title tournament. They, you know, they, they they did it with Naito last year, but that was Just also to say Naito. Up. That, that's <laughs> oh, no. but yeah. For me, uh, since I went with Tachi in the previous one, I'm gonna go with Kota, uh, just because okay. I believe the like that combination of match would make more sense. Gotcha. It was one of those like uh, pretty much either scenario we had for these last two matches. I think could play out. Right. Well, we might be on the same page with this one, though. The next match is the Funky Weapon, Ryusuke Taguchi versus Sonata. Who are you picking in this one? Well, I should say back in March, uh, Sonata was my pick to win the whole thing. As And although back then it was the finals, the finals was going to be in his hometown as they were last year. I felt like right. they were going to go with the same angle of, whoa, well, he almost won in his hometown last year. He uh, And then this year he wins in his hometown. So, yeah, I definitely see him at least may have. I'm not sure how the current events of the world have changed booking, but I definitely see him going into the next round. I do as well, and, well, we'll get to that. But we we'll love Taguchi. He's one of my favorites, but he, he's not winning on this on this occasion. Which leads us to another match. We have Sho versus Shingo Takagi. Who are you picking in this one? 
Uh, well, first I want to say this is, along with Nagano Suzuki, this is probably the opening round match I'm looking forward to the most this year. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, since they killed it last year. Uh, with this one, I'm going with uh, Shingo. You're going with Shingo. I... I know they're really building Shingo up. I mean, he went undefeated and up until some British douchebag upset him in the best of the Super Junior Finals. But I'm actually going in a different direction with this. I am going to pick Show in the upset. I feel like... Uh, I feel like Shingo and Sonata will be a G1 Climax match. I gotcha. And like I said, uh, I have sort of a big picture thing that I'm going to call uh, that kind of is connected to this that I think uh, which is where the sh which is where the Shingo win comes in. But I mean also Show has been great this past year so I would not argue if you had him make it to, let's say, the semifinals. Right. Really, after how great of a Super Junior Tour he had, I really regret not uh, not <laughs> not going over and meeting him and Yo. Uh at Rev Pro, but that's another. So I think everyone there feels that way now. <laughs> yeah, here's our one tangent when we uh, when we were in, we went to a Rev Pro show and there were quite a few you know New Japan stars were available for autographs before the Rev Pro show in New York City, and we had an individual in front of us, and I'm not saying they're bad people or anything, you know, but they're saying like you know the guy handing out the autograph tickets going, who do you need? And they said, uh, everyone but show and you. That's just how he put it. I went through the whole, okay, I want, I want Tana and I want Suzuki and I want Shibata and I want, uh, I went through everything. They went everyone but show and you. But, like, but oh. show and yo. <laughs> I'm like, oh. But I understand that those, a uh, slight change at those conventions, things can add up. So you kind of got to decide oh, what yeah, you absolutely. want and what you can pass. Because I had an experience like that uh, a few years ago, where the uh, they were off a uh, fan fest here in Charlotte. They were offering a photo op with a manager's photo op with Keenan and Cornette, and I'm like, and you know, this is really a few years before the sh Cornette shit got really bad. So I like <laughs> to clarify that. But it's still like, holy shit, two of the greatest managers of all time. A yeah, photo that uh, that'd be amazing. Uh, so like when I came for that one. They were just finishing up a photo with like a photo op of the same thing, but with like James James J. Dillon in it as well. And I like James J. Dillon, but I've already got like a bunch of different photos with him. And also I just feel like it just kind of works better as just the just the two, Heenan and Coronet, since that's kinda like always the one or the other in the middle right. like best manager. And like that I have the whole yin and yang thing going. So I've just felt like concept wise just makes better for a photo op. But I just remember like I think I was like the first one to go through that transit, like to go from the transition of the three of them to the two of them. So like when, so as uh, Dylan was walking off, saw me going in for the photo, just the two of them. Uh, James A. Dylan was just looking at me like, "What the fuck, man!" <laughs> <laughs> and then you had a Heenan who, you know, he had his condition, so he couldn't say anything. We could still see him like audibly laughing and pointing at James J. Dylan. <laughs> Oh, that's great. But yeah, that's the that's the uh, the convention sacrifice we all feel. But if it makes if they ever if they understand English and they feel any better after hearing this, I regret it, especially after your Super Juniors tour. That was amazing. So All right, we go to the next night, but the next uh matchup we have Yoshi Hashi versus Hiroshi Tenzan. Who are you picking in this one? Uh, I, don't know. I know last year they tried doing the whole uh, Yoshi Hashi upset story that people lukewarm kind of accepted. I don't want to say anyone really liked it, but you know, right. I mean, I know enough saying. people enough people didn't hate it. Yeah. Um... Uh, I, uh, I yeah, I, I don't know if they want to, cause you know Tenzan is one of the dads, if you will, but and they might try that again. I'm not saying this out of any fandom for Yoshihashi. Let me clarify that. 
Do not peg me as a Yoshihashi fan after I make this prediction. But I'm going to go Yoshihashi in this one because Tenzan must suffer. And I don't think him being a New Japan dad is going to change that. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Hashi as well, just based on just how New Japan books things. I'm not too happy about it. Well, we have a junior heavyweight matchup in the first round here. We have Yo and Bushi. I think I'm going to go with... I'm going to go Bushi in this one. I'm going to go Bushi because I see... I see Bushi kind of being that uh, that Cinderella story that will make it through a few rounds as a ju- like another dark horse to kind of make it through a few rounds on his side of the bracket. So I'm gonna go Bushi. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Bushi as well. I'm kind of like looking through it. I can't see anything like from future matches that could lead to seeing Yo get there. I mean, Sho and Yo possibly getting to the semifinals would be cool, but I can't see either one getting that far down the road. Uh, nah. And next up, we have Sa- Satoshi Kojima versus Evil. I... With- This is another one where I don't really, I don't really know which way to go with it because I I don't see you know evil still kind of. I feel like there's been way too much Lij love with the exception of Shingo. I feel like you know you already have, with the way I'm predicting it, you already have Hiromu, you have Bushi, you have Sonata. I don't think that Shingo's gonna be the only. LIJ member to not make it out of the first round. So I'm going to go Kojima in what might be considered an upset to some. I got you. Uh, For me, I'm going to go with Evil. Uh, Like I said, I can just see this one being very LIJ heavy. Okay, that's Uh, fair. Yeah, and like I said, I kind of explained why in a little bit since we're almost finished with the first round. Uh, plus, also, well, either one, I think it works just because then you can have them face, you know, possibly the uh, open weight champion in the next round, and whoever wins there could possibly set up a match down, like title match down the road. You're right. You've got me second guessing, but I'm going to stick with my guns. I got you. <laughs> I'm going to stick with my pick. I'm not going to backtrack. I'm, I'm still going to go Kojima because Kojima's still kind of portrayed a little bit, in, with the exception of his injury, is kind of like the dad that can still kind of go. Yeah. So that's why I said it, it might be considered an upset him beating Evil, but he's still kind of... I don't feel like his best days are behind him. You know what I mean? No, I got you. Um, or that, or my, that may be the wrong way of saying it. Like, I, I feel like he could still be taken seriously as more of a threat than, like, say, somebody. Yeah, like he could still Tenzan be still get a title match or someone like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think there's going to be any doubt in this next matchup, unless they want to set up uh, a title match down the road. We have Hiroki Goto versus Yujiro Takahashi. I'm going Goto. I, uh, if you're not, yeah, I think this I is like probably Yujiro. the surest one in the tournament. Yes. Yes, this is Southwest Missouri State versus Duke. This is <laughs> yes. So we're both going Goto in this one. So all right, so that is the first round. Now for me and you, we both have. Makabe and Ishii in the next round. Uh, who are you picking for that? That one's actually a good question. Uh, on this, I haven't really looked much on this side further down the road. Uh, let's see. I want to say Ishii just because 
like it just because they can keep sure that they have a good match going. But they have at least someone that could probably work in these conditions. Right. I I agree. I'm I'm going I'm going Ishii as well. Um. And yeah, same. Just same kind of thing. Like Makabe is kind of Makabe is in that position. He could lose every match, but all. He'll always be Makabe. He's a he's a, a a many he he transcends wrestling in Japan, so I think he'll be fine. Uh next up we both have Yano and Hiromu. I'm going Hiromu. What say you? Same, yeah, I can see Hiromu going very far in this. So yeah, I can see him going over Yano. Okay. Now is where things get interesting. I have Okada facing off with Yuji Nagata in the next round. You have Okada facing off with Minoru Suzuki. Does Murder Grandpa's New Japan Cup dreams continue here? Oh uh, yes. Uh, sorry if I if I knew we were going to go this specific, I wouldn't have mentioned uh, kind of my pre- my long shot predictions earlier. But yeah, I see uh, Suzuki going over. Uh, Okada here just to kind of keep Okada kind of out, like, kind of like I said earlier, out without getting too much focus on a big loss. And then possibly, the, these two are kind of like almost always feuding in one way or another, so this is also right. just an easy rematch to go to down the road. I'm feeling you there. Um, I'm going Okada over Nagata. I see this, I'd like this match to have fans. But... Yeah, that's the ma- that's the match I would love to see in a crowd. But I could also see this kind of really playing out like a... Like, this could be like a really epic match where there are so many times where you're just like, oh, Nakata's gonna do it. Nakata, like, he's really gonna do it, you guys. And just one well-timed Rainmaker later, you know, after all the, the momentum... Uh, just imagine just going into the Rainmaker with him countering it into, you know, the arm lock with the eyes oh, yeah. and the back of the head oh, yeah. and everything. Yeah, I could see that, like, you know, going for that, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's some, you know, gets a little color, you know, all that happening, and we're all like, oh, my God, oh, my God, he's, he's going to beat Okada, he's going to beat Okada, and then, you know, much like Okada does if you're a Naito or a Bushi fan, just, well, with the exception of this year, just piss all over your dreams again, <laughs> Okada... Cries in Gato. <laughs> yeah. Okada ends the uh, the dad's uh, the dad's run in that round, and I have you or you have Yuya versus Ishimori. I have Kinemaru versus Ishimori. Who are you picking in this one? That's actually a good question, just because. Like I said, at this point, I don't see anyone really in this bottom corner here winning. So it could almost, like, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but almost, like, could go any way, or the result will always be the, the result's going to end up regardless. But I'm going to go with Ishimori just because I can't see him. I can't see a, a, a young lion going that far. I, I'm agreeing with you in partials because I have him going over somebody else. I'm going Ishimori as well. He's kind of like the 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 top villain of the uh, junior division. So I see him, you know... First of all, I kind of see Kenamaru and Ishimori being like a match that could have been in Best of Super Juniors had they had, they had that this year. So I can see them kind of just having their match here. Ishimori yeah. wins. And, you know... Has a little bit of momentum after a, a good showing in the New Japan Cup to take back with him to take back with him to the junior division. So now we have I have Tanahashi and ZSJ. You have Taichi and Ibushi. So we have two completely different matches we're predicting here. Taichi and Ibushi, who are you picking? Uh, with that one, I'm gonna say Abushi. Okay. Uh, yeah, just I can't see Tachi getting pretty much a win over both of the tag champs right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am going to actually go with 
this is kind of my big one. Like, I don't know who to pick. I am going to go with ZSJ in this one. It's interesting because I feel like they've been doing this match. They've, they've been doing that match a lot in the last year, and most of the time it has been uh, ZSJ winning it, it feels like. I, I feel like that's just kind of a good way to kind of keep this, you know. Sorry if I offend any British people like, I can beat your ace. I can beat your ace. Kind of, you know, his like little asshole mentality. He can always, always yeah. go to the fact that he has Tanahashi's number. You know, and seems to always be able to have Tanahashi's number. I feel like that's kind of, especially now with Tana getting up there in age. And I just also don't see... I... Actually, I, I do want to, I'm going to switch my pick now. Because I just looked at who the oh. winner's going to be facing. I'm going Tana. I'm changing it up. Oh, really? I, I am going to go Tana because something else just entered my head. And we're going to talk about that when we get to the next match. But yeah. Not, not, not. He, he'll barely squeak it out. Similar, like when he won the Ref Pro title last year. Yeah. But and it seems like they do that a lot. Where like ZSJ wins a lot, but like Tana wins just enough so that it's just not like a burial every time. Right. Like almost like for uh, like he will like like it's two to three uh, saber if they face each other three times in a row. <laughs> right. So. The next match, you have an LIJ exclusive match with Sonata versus Shingo. Who are you picking in this one? Uh, with this one, and this kind of, uh, I feel like this, I'd have to actually explain part of my big picture here. But I see Sonata going on, because I do think pretty much LIJ people facing each other is going to be a big aspect of this tournament. I, I agree. Um, I'm also going with Sonata, and that will also kind of maybe, well, we'll, we'll get to it, but maybe you'll kind of see why I decided, when I took another look at this bracket where I'm, why I had to switch it up a little bit, but yeah, and we both have Yoshihashi versus Bushi in the next round, uh, does the does the Yoshi train continue? It's like I don't want that train to continue. Uh, let's see. At least with how I'm seeing it, I could see pretty much either one going through because I don't see them going past the next round. But uh, let's see, for sake of this one, I'm going to say Bush uh, Bushi. Yes, I'm going Bushi as well. Sorry, not sorry, Yoshihashi. And you have Hiroki Goto versus Evil in the next round. Who are you picking in that one? Uh, with that one, I see Evil going through. Uh, also, because then you have uh, you know, kind of a guaranteed match you can do, uh, possibly on July 12th or just somewhere down the road with fans. Or for the Never title. Right. Wait, wait, I can't remember. Did he win? I don't even remember who the champion is at this point. I don't either. I, it I don't maybe, really, Actually, I don't it may really... be Shingo. I don't think it affects was, this here. I like it was this... Shingo. This is it's embarrassing, but like it's been that's kind of the belt I care the least about, even though it's kind of in higher esteem than the U.S. title, but still. It's just kind of the belt I don't really get, but... Oh yeah, uh, currently is Shingo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he he won it like right right before everything closed. <laughs> well, there but you go. okay, that still doesn't change well, my kind of overall um, perspective. That also kind of plays in the fact it's an open weight title. She'll beat Shingo. You can have a rematch. Oh, I didn't even th yeah that did. I feel yeah. like I thought of that when this was announced back in February, but like that didn't even cross my mind here. So actually, yeah, that is. Your thought is very possible here. <laughs> so, okay, we're doing... So, yeah, there we go. I am going uh, with... I'm going to go with... I think the, uh, the dad... The dad Cinderella story continues here. Kojima over Goto. I would not complain about that. <laughs> no. 
All right, so that we've gotten to the second round. We are now to round three, and we both have Ishii and Hiromu. Does the junior champion triumph over the Stone Pitbull, in your opinion? I don't know how, but yes, I'm going. Uh, I think this that would be a big upset, but I, I personally do see. Uh, Hiromu going really far in this, especially since at, since the next show New Japan was supposed to have was going to be uh, Hiromu and uh, Naito in a match at right. the anniversary show. So I can at least see them teasing that, that it's still like kind of happening. I'm... Well, I, I'm going with Hiromu as well. And... Yeah, just... Hiromu, if you're not picking up on this, Hiromu and Kojima are kind of my, my two Cinderella stories that I have going on for this tournament. But you in the next uh, next match have Suzuki and Ishimori, where I have Okada and Ishimori. Who are you picking in this one? Yeah, this is honestly probably one of the weirder matchups, I think. I'll say right now for me, I'm picking Okada. Uh, had a good run, but the uh, the Rainmaker puts down the the top junior of one of the bigger villainous factions in New Japan. I got you. I'm sorry. Could you say my match again? <laughs> you have Suzuki Nishimori. Okay. Um, with this one, I can see Suzuki because I just feel like they can play up. Just the oh, he wasn't even in. Uh, the G1 last year, and now he's like inching very close to the finals for uh, this year of the New Japan Cup. Gotcha. At that, yeah, that, that's I can see that also happening. Uh, but I just have Okada going a little further. But still, I, I would not I would not complain about Suzuki going far in this tournament because it means more Suzuki. So, again, we both have Sonata, but you have Sonata facing Ibushi. I have Sonata facing Tanahashi. Who are you picking in what, for both of us, would be a pretty big matchup, regardless of who we have going forward? Let's see. Uh, with this one, I'm going with uh, Sonata. I uh I'm going with Sonata as well. I feel like this is this is going to kind of be Sonata's signature win of the tournament. I feel okay, interesting. And also for me, it's like if you if everything went well, as sig planned signature win, and signature win leading up to some things, we'll we'll get I got there. You. We'll get there in a minute. I feel like I said I feel like if everything didn't uh, everything in the world didn't like bust into flames. I feel like, and let's say this tournament happened back in March, and everything went as Gato probably has in his like notebook. That honestly, uh, at the original Dominion show would have been Abushi winning the title, or uh, winning actually both titles. But since everything is, you know, everything has been changed, I, I just don't see. Keep, it. I wonder if they're going to keep like essentially treating those as unified titles. I wonder how they're eventually going to split that up. If they're yeah, that is. Yeah, I think they will at some point, but honestly, I don't see it happening anytime soon with the way they've been kind of bright, like uh, building up these double championship matches. Right. But uh, yeah, for this one, I'm gonna say uh, Sonata, just because I just feel like Abushi's eventual win has been pushed back some. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, but I'm going Sonata, but. Well, you'll see why I'm going Sonata here pretty... It's going to be a much uh, much more clear. <laughs> but we're both going with Sonata. Okay. Uh, the next match, you have Bushi and Evil. I have Bushi and Kojima. Who are you going with? Uh, for me, uh, like I said, to kind of go with the whole LIJ theme, I, well, I guess either one does. <laughs> but uh, Evil. Evil? I am yes. sticking with Kojima on this one. I feel like the 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 thoughts of uh, one last run and the chance to become a double champion is gonna 
carry Satoshi Kojima on, at least through this round. And, you know, kind of slam the door at a potential Naito Bushi match that a lot of people, they, that they could, like, spend time going, oh, well, you know, this is a possibility. Well, you know, this is a possibility. Yeah. So, so are we on the are we on the, we have, the semifinals now? I think. Yeah, we have the semifinals. We are at the elite eight. We have. Oh no, we don't. We're not the elite. Yeah, we got. Well, this is this not the elite eight. This is the uh, this is the semifinals. The final four. Yeah. So I have uh, Hiromu and Okada. You have Hiromu and Suzuki. Who advances out of this one? I don't know, before we get to that, I like just looking back. I'm not gonna, t- I'm not gonna take back my uh, picks from earlier, but I'm just kind of like looking back on it. So I was like, huh. Well, if Yuya wins like these next two things, then you could have gotten pretty much Suzuki murdering a young lion to get to the semifinals. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I never thought of that until just now. But uh, for this one, I'm going with Hiromu. I think they're going to have a match that is going to get very chaotic. I can see, like, since, you know, one is the heel stable and the other is kind of like, they were the cool heel heel stable and now they're baby faces, but still kind of on the heelish, or still at least on kind of the heelish side at times. You can have it just be a very chaotic match with members from both sides getting involved and crazy shenanigans. But I see... uh, uh, Hiromu uh, squeaking out a win. Plus, also, with this match, you could also get some uh, suzuki uh, Daryl interactions. Ooh, that'd be fun. I would like that. Yeah. I am going with Okada over Hiromu. I feel like... And you're going to notice a theme with my uh, semifinals. The, the clock is striking midnight, and... Naito's greatest rival has shut the door on him facing off against one of his stablemates and the champion of the other division in at Dominion. Okada. Oh God, I'm just realizing, like, uh, I'm down with what you're saying, but you notice how, know how many American fans are just going to be, like, shitting themselves, in, like, if it goes out your way as they see, like, Okada inching closer and closer and then realizing that everything's opened back up again and Naito has already lost the belt back to Okada. Yeah. <laughs> like, I almost want to see that just because I'm sure there's just going to be like so much, re- or not necessarily that particular finish, but the idea like the further Okada goes, I'm almost kind of excited just to see how angry how American Naito fans, fans get. are going to melt down. Yes, absolutely. But we have a saving grace. And that may come in the form of the next round. You have, well, we'll start with you. You have Sonata and Evil, the tag team, facing off against one another, who advances to the finals. Uh, with this one, is, I'm pretty sure you can obviously tell from me, I'm going with uh, Sonata in this one. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was like, now that the book, now that it's getting a bit more clear, I feel like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I am. I am also going with Sonata. The, again, like I said, a general theme of the semifinals in mine is midnight strikes on the two Cinderella stories. So Sonata, I got you. you have Sonata and Hiromu in Lij finals. I have Sonata and Okada. Who is the, your New Japan Cup winner? For me, my New Japan Cup winner is Sonata, and I think, and if you just couldn't tell with how I was going here, I feel like they're going to have an angle with pretty much she had to, that Sonata pretty much had to beat almost every Lij member, so he went right. through uh, he went through Evil, he went through Shingo, he went through uh, Hiromu to now face Naito on uh, the twelfth. So I feel like because I know it seemed like they were kind of setting up a bunch of of LIJ versus LIJ matches uh, before everything happened, at least some in one way or another between the anniversary shows or the tournaments. So I feel like this is their way of still kind of playing up that angle, and if it could eventually lead to any major impacts on the group, like long time, like somewhere down the road. Right. Yeah, I could see that happening. 
I'm going with, at least as of right now, a little bit more of an optimistic story, at least coming out of the New Japan Cup. <laughs> Sonata finally gets that singles win, that big singles win, that one that really is going to propel him forward against Okada to be able to, you know, he was the the naked uh, man without a belt in LIJ. Well, now he's got a big trophy and he's going to try and take both. Is, is it for both belts at Dominion or is it just one? Uh, both belts. So he's going to take both. He's going to have a trophy and take both belts from his leader, or at least attempt to, at Dominion. So I'm going with. Sonata. Oh, I was about to say, are we predicting the actual uh, championship match as well? <laughs> well, we can, but uh, if you'd like to, this will just be. This isn't part of the bracket for anybody entering the contest. Using this as a guide to enter the contest. Gotcha. Um, I do. I I do think that. You know, I think Naito is. I feel like him getting a big moment in the main event of Osaka, which is basically what ruined his career as the Stardust genius to begin with. Him being able to possibly do the LIJ roll call with everybody in the city that once hated him finally doing that, that's a bigger moment than him even getting the dome. I feel like once, oh, yeah. once he gets that, he's free to lose the belt now. At least... Yeah, the and then uh, also going with your results, that's probably best because even if Okada got to the final or got to the championship match, and let's say they gave a one to crush everybody's dream and put the belt right back on Okada, I couldn't see them doing it in a venue that that legally has to be like at one-third capacity. Yeah. With how much they want Okada looking, you know, winning in big presentation matches with huge crowds and everything, I can't see them wanting, you know, their top guy winning on on kind of an asterisk like that. Yeah. Um, the one thing... One thing we should mention is there is going to be a... Isn't there, there's going to be a show the day before where it's just like a mystery card... Uh, yeah. What are they gonna? What do, what do you think they're gonna do with that show? You think they're gonna have some big matches on there, or is it just gonna be kind of some tag matches? And hey, look, guys. Yeah, I think it's gonna be more of a road show, like a road two show that kind of like establishes some of the angles that they're gonna be playing out throughout the tournament. One thing I thought I don't see this having, but I thought would be cool is if they do Hiromu versus Naito on that card, and you could have like Hiromu has such a good showing that that's. He's inspired now, and he's going to take this momentum. He almost got him, and he's going to take this momentum to go to the New Japan Cup, and he's going to get his rematch at Dominion. I could see them maybe trying something like that. I don't think they will, I mean, but I'm saying... That would be pretty cool, though. Happen. Yeah. Because... But, of course, the- also just knowing how much... Just knowing how New Japan works, and the way they like to... Sometimes some people call it uh, surpass expectations or surprise expectations. Other call it other people call it stomp on their dreams. I feel like there's a very good chance like either of us could be completely wrong with how this plays out. Oh yeah, I I could see it would not surprise me in the slightest if Bruce Kataguchi upsets Sonata and busts my bracket first round. <laughs> It happens in real sports. Or, or it's like, oh, Nagata's sports. the one that gets the Cinderella story as it right. goes on, and messing it like every other one else's bracket. Right. Or um, oh, this is oh, it's because of this thing that's going to pay off in like two years from now. Right. Exactly. But that is, if you don't follow New Japan, we we follow New Japan pretty closely, and that is that is our bracket. And it's good to have it back. Yes, it is great to have it back. I, I feel mentally better knowing New Japan's coming back. Um, and, yeah, that's our brackets. We both have Sonata winning it all, just with the little different roads of getting there. But feel free, at the time of this recording, you still have a couple more days to enter your bracket. And, yeah, this has been a special Just Two Marks Wrestling Recap Show for the New Japan Cup Bracket. See you guys next time. So long for now.